Hello and welcome to another ZBrush iPad getting started tutorial. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to save and load your files and how to optimize both your scene and your files for better performance, regardless of which iPad you're using. So first, let's take a look at our home screen again. And under My Sculpts, you can access all of your previously made sculpts, including Z Tools, Z Projects, and Quick Saves. Let's just open up this Z Project over here and let's talk about how to save and load. So I can tap this little button on the top left corner and tap and hold will allow me to choose if I wanna save, save as, or save next. I can also access the user settings directly, but more on that in a little bit. I can also import files, textures and floor grids, but let's talk about 3D models. I can choose the file format from OBJ, MA, GoZ, USD, ZPR, which is Z project, and ZTL, which is Z tool. Depending on which one you pick, you have different options on the bottom. In this case, we can skip loading the undo history if we're importing a ZPR. You can also export this, and as you export in with different files, you can see the options on the bottom change. So you can enable and disable saving the undo history. You can compress the undo history for a smaller file size. And you can also optimize this, which is set on by default. Now let's take a look at the user settings. If I go to a user settings under file IO, I can enable or disable quick save, which is the auto save in ZBrush. You can change the maximum duration in minutes for ZBrush to perform a quick save. So if you slide this up, now it's 127 minutes and as it is right now under 31, for example, it's every half an hour or so, ZBrush will perform a quick save. Rest duration is how many minutes does ZBrush need to be inactive for it to perform an automatic quick save. So if you leave ZBrush open and you don't touch it or you switch to a different application, then ZBrush will perform a quick save after one minute. Maximum quick save files will tell ZBrush how many files can be stored in disk. Then you can delete the current quick save files by pressing this button. And you can also skip quick save history, which means all your quick save files will not have undo history, making them shorter and easier to transfer, but it won't retain your undo history. Now you can change this save options. If you click this default save as and click Z tool, now every time you press that button on the top left corner, it will save a Z tool instead of Z project. Now keep in mind that Z tool does not retain your undo history. So if you wanna retain your undo history, be sure to set this as Z project. Now let's take a look at optimizing and performance. So if you go to performance, you can change how many threads of your CPU are being currently drawn to ZBrush. By default, this is set to eight on my device, but if you wanna make sure that it's set to your device and the, the current needs of ZBrush, you can press this optimal button, so it will change depending on how many threads are currently available and ZBrush can draw upon them. Now, if we go under mem or memory, you can change the maximum polygons per mesh. This will increase your performance if for some reason you're having some lagging issues on your device. If you have a older model of an iPad, or maybe you don't have like the M4 or the M2, like the latest iPad Pro, you can change this and lower this number. So you can have a mesh that's a maximum of 20 million. So this is 19, 0.25 million polygons, but by default, mine is set to 91.25, which means 91 million and 250,000 polygons. The max sculpturist polygons, it's the amount of polygons in millions that sculptures can handle. So if I activate Sculptures Pro and I turn on a brush, I can only work on subtools that have less than 5 million polygons. So this was performance, saving and loading your files. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.